Welcome back to Ringworm. Oh, excuse me for a sec. Okay, where were, oh yeah. Welcome back to Ringworm. <laughs> it's awesome out here having your own shooting. <laughs> this place is really fantastic. I mean, ringworm in general, but right here, this shooting range is just like, it's kind of a dream come true. Gotten a lot done on this range in the last couple of weeks. When I first moved out here to the woods, I put this one little hallway in here just so I could shoot into the hillside. Had a couple little homemade uh, steel targets. And just last week, came back down, cleared out another section of the range. So now I have two ranges. That side we, you saw, we just put in a 22 range with all sorts of flippers and floppers and spinnies. And then this side, we turned into like a speed shooting range, all steel targets. And then I think last week, uh, we revamped that table, which is a couple of years old. I made that, uh, yeah, probably two and a half years ago. It's just sat out here since then. Took a fair amount of bracing and swearing to make that uh, serviceable again. And then we uh, put this thing together last week. This is the new table, much heftier, very nice to have out here. So we only got two things left to do on the range that I can think of. Hopefully I can keep thinking of more stuff because this is just so fun. By the way, I don't put a lot of actual shooting on this channel. You'd say, Ryan, we see you shooting guns all the time. It's just, it's not a gun channel. It's not a shooting channel. If you are a good shot and well-practiced, just skip past the few seconds here and there where I'm shooting. I'm not trying to become a great shot. I just like the process of seeing if I can figure out how to do something better. So I'm not, you know, watching videos and doing drills and stuff. I just like coming out here on my own, screwing around, trying different things out. Whether a year from now I can shoot uh, those five targets in three seconds or two seconds, it's not going to make any difference to me. I just think it's really fun to do. So, since we have all this nice steel here, these five targets are movable. Clearly the ones on the chain back there aren't. There's six of them that go from 12 inch down to, I think, three inches. I thought it would be fun to make this a rifle range as well. And by rifle range, I just mean... I'm gonna cut straight back through there, cut a bunch of those trees out, hopefully not too many. I think at least the first half of the distance back there, they're just real small scrubby spruces. I guess I'm just gonna cut a few, stand at the far end of the cut, look back here, make sure I'm still lined up with the targets, cut a few more. And I think where we can put this little deck uh, is right in that clearing back there. I thought I thought it'd be fun to make this little little deck. Maybe we'll do like four feet by seven or eight feet. Probably similar construction to this. I've got some leftovers. I've got some, I think this is spruce two by material. Of course, they're all still in full boards, like 10 to 14 inches wide. And then this is a cedar, one inch cedar. I'd really like to go back there, lay down with a sandbag and see what I can hit with my 22 rifle. It's just a cheapo, older, tube-fed marlin, but it's got, I put a pretty nice scope on it last year. I don't know, I don't think 120 yards would be too big a stretch for that rifle, but I'd love to find out, and this is the only way I can think to do it. So let's carve out a corridor, shall we? So the steel targets are direct. You know what? Before we get to work, I've got, I just have a little bit too much ammo. Way too much fun. Okay, let's cut something. Unfortunately, I can't see through that at all, so I don't know where this lines up back here. I guess I'll just dump the lumber right in the middle here and see where we pop out. I'm gonna save any of this that's straight. I'm gonna save it up and chip it. 
We can either use it on the shooting range or we'll put it around uh, the platform down there. Already, I can't decide how much needs to be trimmed. Like as I go back farther, am I still gonna be able to shoot in between this tree and those two? Eesh, just don't know. I guess if it's a question, I'm just gonna leave them, right? Right. By the time I get all the way back there, it's just gonna be like thread and a needle. You shoot a 22 through there, it's a little bit too far. Maybe, maybe it'll hit one tree and like pinball through the middle. Or maybe I'll just have to cut a few more of these down. to be a longer and longer backup every time. Now that I'm further back, I can see I gotta cut those couple trees. It's getting way too narrow up there. Right on the wheeler. We kind of have a problem. There's a little bit, well, there's, I guess there's kind of a low spot right here. We're probably 60, 70 yards out now. The ground kind of, I don't know, has like a hump in it, like a 40 foot long hump that's only, I don't know, maybe a couple feet high. But as you get further and further back, you're kind of looking lower and lower at the targets. I have no idea if you'd be able to see that up there. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's go hack down that rifle rest there. That's definitely in the way. Here's another 30-30 shell for my coat hooks. Uh, I don't have that bit down here. Let's just hack it off. I still have to finish this anyway, regardless of what it looks like right now. I mean, we might get to the other end, go to build that platform and have to put it 10 feet off the ground. That's fine, that'd be fun to build. Well, it's been several days since I got to do any cutting. It's supposed to be really nice for like a whole week and then just overnight, I went to sleep, it said no rain for 10 days, woke up and it was pouring. Tito was supposed to come out, we were gonna work on his cabin, put in his footings, do some milling, and just couldn't do anything. Luckily, the last time you saw me cutting, which for you was like seven seconds ago, me was like three or four days, it was sunny enough, I got out the solar panels, which was really sweet. Got my both my jackeries charged all the way up in one day so freaking cool to have free power and not have to run i hate running the generator i just don't like listening to it i'm listening to a podcast titled physics consciousness and the science of mind and i'm wondering do you have to feel stupid to get smarter or maybe it's the stupider you feel the faster you'll get smart I'm getting smart real fast i have no idea what's going on <laughs> we have to cut it.
<laughs> it could not be wetter than that. Yeah. Look at that kindling. Holy crackers. <laughs> Dang, that's a way to strip a birch. Two for one. Oh baby. This has taken a lot longer than I expected it to. I thought this would be like a day or two just to clear a little bit out. Just so you could sneak a 22 through there. And I'm going on like a week and a half. It's been a ton of rain. But I think we're down to one tree left. Just got this guy and then we can see all the way through. It's kind of a twisty turny one so probably won't get any mill logs out of it but it's also way deader than most of them yeah i think since this log is so twisty i'm gonna hold on to it <laughs> this happened a lot of times where you know there's no use for it it's got a hole through the middle it's rotten whatever i chop it up into firewood and then i gotta find somewhere to stack it and then i go to build whatever i'm building and i need some feet you know one or two foot log sections to set a platform on or a building on and i don't have any because i already chopped them up so this looks like it's only rotty in the last couple feet i think we'll just let it sit here and then we can section it up and drag it over there and build our shooting platform on it So, not, not super accurate, because the uh, batteries in my cheapo laser weren't too good, so I had to shoot like a dozen times to get down here. But this tree right here is at 100 yards, so the question is, do I put the platform here? It'd be kind of nice because it'd be in the shade, or do I just go back as far as I can? Let's see how much further that is from here. That tree is 9 foot 11. Can you reach, man? Can you reach? I can't see the laser, but I got a reading, so 38. So this is another 50, so we could get another 20 yards, make it 120. I mean, it'd be more normal to like shoot a rifle at a regular distance if you're at a range. Of course, if you were like hunting or something, you don't get that option. Uh, well, let's see what we got for platform space here. This is a nice stump I could use for a foot. That's garbage. Uh, maybe make those reach. Could use that one. Yeah, it's actually only this big one and the tiny one that are in line with where I'm going there. Wow, this is actually gonna have to be pretty tallish. Like my eyesight will just barely grab those uh, blue targets on the chain there. I'm thinking I might put some paper targets on the hillside up above those. I'd still like to be able to hit the blue, so let's see. Can I get by with four and a half feet? Yeah, let's do it. I think I'm gonna make this a, a three-legged deck. I think I'm just gonna put one fat one here, and then I found these two cement pavers. Put those for the two back feet. Pavers will just give it a little bit bigger of a footprint, and that way, too, if the back sinks, which it will, this is the ground's so soft. It'll sink in, it's not really gonna make any difference. I mean, the deck could just be tilted up a tiny bit. So let's grab a four and a half foot log and then probably two six footers or so. Maybe we'll do this five so we have room to make some adjustments. Oh, <laughs> I stopped to uh, cook some hot dogs over my brush fire and took my helmet off. I was just about to start the chainsaw.
I have any idea how big to make this. I'm thinking, I don't know, eight feet or so. Somewhere around there. Maybe three feet wide. I don't really want to make it any bigger than I have to so I can use the lumber for other projects. You almost got knocked out. It's about yet away. You know what? Let's make the frame first. <laughs> I'm like, I don't actually know what I'm doing right now. Let's just switch and do something else. So this is what we got to work with. We got, oh, perfect. Eight foot two, so it'll be eight feet long. We're up against a little bit of a problem. This side, I can't even remember. Where did we get this uh, spruce tree? Oh, this is from cutting the 22 side of the shooting range, right? Clearing that out. This must be the very bottom log out of that tree because it had kind of a bad spot in one side of it. You can see this is good wood. This is a little mushy, so I'm going to have to just rip it back to that. We'll make the frame, and then, you know, when everything's together, if the floor's got too much flex in it, I've got more, like, scraps of this. I can just scab some more on, thicken it up. I don't know. I think it'll work. I was going to say nobody's going to sleep up here, but I bet you when Tito sees it, he'll end up sleeping up there. There's absolutely no reason to do this, but I can't help myself planing off the edges a little bit. As you all know, I like to leave the bottom side green, raw, natural, instead of trimming everything down to the same size because it just gives you more strength. If I cut them all the same size, like the thickest one, that one would have to get cut. it would lose an inch and a half to get it all down to, that looks like the skinniest one. So I'll leave them as they are, flat side up. And then I like to trim the legs out. Well, you can see on here, I'll just cut down in here. And I like to leave a, you know, a 90 degree angle there. So I screw the board here, but it also sits down on that. So even if your screws or nails rot out or, you know, it's not strong enough, it's still sitting right on the log itself. But in order to do that, I'm gonna have to cut a flat spot on the board. So the one is gonna connect here, right in the middle, middle of the board. So in the middle of it, I'll cut a, whatever it is, six inches or something. And then the back, there'll be two feet. So just on those corners, I'll have to trim them, you know, the same height. So this one is going to go on the front. So we'll just trim out there a little bit. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. I guess I could just leave it like that. It'll work all right because it's in the middle. But if you put a leg in the corner where two pieces come together, you can't have one that's this long and one that's this long, you know. Well, I guess you could. You could trim the log down. So I'm going to square the logs on the back corners. I guess you could square it and have one cut come lower. Yeah, since there's nothing joining up here, I guess I'll just make it that deep of a cut. Man, the bugs just came out like today. Get up underneath my helmet and climb around. It's like a skull-shaped jungle gym. Let's see if it fits right. 
Yep, that's perfect. Oh, by the way, I'd like to say again, thanks to uh, the folks that support, support me on Patreon or PayPal, you bought me this nice new driver that I've been waiting years to buy. I think you guys saw when I was building, was it last week's video or two weeks ago when I was making the speed shooting range and I was driving <laughs> a couple screws in, I was like, oh, did it sound funny? I think it might've sounded funny, finally. And of course I can't have my drill die when I'm out here building stuff. So I uh, immediately ordered the top of the line. The top of the line is still only like, I don't know, just over a hundred bucks or something. But holy crap, that other one was like the cheap one that came with the kit of tools. Maybe, geez, I have no idea, 15 years ago or something. And I've used the crap out of it. And it was strong enough, even the cheapest one was strong enough to break screws. But you know, the tools have just even, just they get better every year. And this thing is like, <laughs> I just took a, when I got it, I just took a couple longest screws I had and went over to a stump and tried drilling them straight down at an angle and everything. It was just skipping like this, even with the new bed in here, it was, it was skipping out of the top of the screw. That's just because I had so much power. I wasn't leaning on it enough. But the good thing is now I have the other as a backup. It hasn't quite burned out. And man, I've done everything I can to kill that thing and it just wouldn't die. This thing actually has settings on it. It's got an automatic and then one, two, and three. I'm like, why would you need that? You just put it on as high as it goes and go with it. But it's kind of cool to put it on the low one if you're trying to back out a gnarly screw and you don't want to just like pull the trigger and strip it. Strip it. it takes it out really slowly. Let's see what it does going in. Yeah, like that's full speed. And then of course you put it in three. <laughs> That's a monster. I could put this together with nails, but now I've got this nice driver, I want to use it. <laughs> Smoke them in there. Oh, see? Too much power. Slow it down. Yeah, that's a lot of horsies in there. You know, there are problems with technology, like we spend too much time on Netflix probably as a culture. Social media has got us all messed up in the head, but we need to appreciate the progress in technology as far as power tools go. It's worth it all. We all might be nuts and anxiety ridden, but we've got great power tools for a great price. It's actually uh, considerably quieter than the other one too. I like that. I have no idea how I'm gonna get this up here. I thought I'd put it together piece by piece, but there's not really a good way to do that either. And I don't know how and where to make the back legs until I get, get this kind of up there. Yeah, this is a really awkward thing to build with only three legs and up kind of high. Okay, don't watch this. This is gonna be really messy. Probably gonna end up dropping it. Oh man. Can't even tell if it's is it sitting on there right? Yep. Damn it. Take two. trying to level this thing out. I gotta keep pulling the screws, scoot it up. Tried the automatic on here. By the way, this is the PBL. That means peanut butter lover, ID02. It's just what I found online that fit my batteries. But check this out. This is the auto setting. I'll just pull the trigger all the way. 
<laughs> it just like hammers it out. It's kind of cool. It's a little slow. Keep it from ruining stuff though. Let's see what it does forward. Let's go slow. All right, two logs. I need uh, five and a half feet. A couple five and a half footers. This ought to be good. Ooh, there's a big crack. Maybe that happened when it fell. Let's trim it back a little bit. Yeah, and after all that talk, I forgot to uh, trim this corner out so it would be flat. So I'm thinking I could just stick the log in there and mark it. I've never done it like this, and it would be super easy just to trim this with a chainsaw, but just to try something different, let's leave it just like it is. Yeah, that worked all right to make it jog. That'll definitely do. Zip. <laughs> it's so much fun. I love new tools. Holy cow. That's not going to be too bad. Throw some floor. Oh no, we got a couple more braces inside. I think I'm just going to do the chop and scooch on these instead of ripping all the edges ahead of time because the lumber's still wet so it's going to shrink up quite a bit. It'll leave some cracks and then of course it's going to be out here getting rained on stuff. It'll swell back up. So I'm just going to put it on there, rough cut it with the chainsaw and scooch it together. You know, I don't know if you want cracks bigger than a quarter inch or something but other than that it should be fine. I was going to say, you know, it would be amazing if these were all eight foot or longer. It looks like they are. No fitting or anything. easy. I could run the saw through each one of these one more time and close them up, but with all these laid out, all the boards I have here, I might just barely have enough to do the whole thing without having to go find more. So we'll leave a few cracks, just enough to drop a 22 shell through. Yeah, I'd normally slide one up to the edge, put a couple nails in it to hold it, slide the next one over, chop, chop, scooch, chop, scooch. Once it fits, slide it up tight, put a nail in each end and do one board by one board. This is so close to the edge that if I fit these all really tight, it's guaranteed not to quite fit on there. I'll be like a half inch short. So I laid them all on here and I'm just looking through to see which, which are the big knobs sticking out that can be trimmed off. 
see like this crack here in order to get rid of that i have to run the saw through the entire crack all down to the other end then the whole board gets shifted over a quarter inch so i think i'm going to leave that you can see on this board here if i just nip that right there a little bit there a little bit there and then a couple nubs down there i can probably make it fit it'll get rid of that huge crack in the end We got one chainsaw slice left. I guess we'll just do this last one here. One run through there and call it good. Look at that. Nice and even with the edge. Let's leave it just like that. You know, I just thought of just about to go up and at least grab a 22 or something, try this out. This thing needs a ladder. As soon as I fold up my ladder and walk away from here, there's no way to get up there. I mean, you could climb up there, but you'd probably end up pulling it over. Let's see what time it is. Oh, it's the worst time. There's a little bit more time to work, like another hour. There's only like... 15 minutes and I just have to go up and uh, at least grab the pellet gun. Let's see if we can rip out a ladder real fast. Oh look, a bunch of ladder wood. Isn't it cool it just grows like this? What do we need, about eight feet or so? Yeah, that's close enough. Holy crap, that is gonna be a beastly ladder. Yeah, I think two of those and a bunch of rungs is going to be too ha heavy for me to even set up there, so let's do some skinnier ones. I think I've done this before and made them about a foot apart. I kind of like to leave this bark on so it's not so slippy, but the bugs do like to eat it up that way. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it on there. Look at that thing go. Are you sick of me saying that yet? Going to have to hear it for a couple more months. I like to put the bottom one and the top one on first just to get the spacing of the uprights correct.
Now, so one thing when you do this is trying to, before you do that plunge cut, make sure the bar is leveled right over to the other side. It makes it a lot easier to fit it later on. Almost no matter what, when you're just, you know, cutting these by hand, you'll get an angle that's off this way or this way. So just fit it on there, look around, and then recut if you have to. will probably end up getting peeled at some point. <laughs> I've learned that if you might have to peel them later, you gotta sink the screws all the way in past the bark. Otherwise you're doing it with your knife and keep hitting the screws and put big dings in your in your blade. Yeah that's gonna be good. I finally, uh, it's warm enough. I had, I, I got to wear a t-shirt. Can you read it? You know, you found a good girlfriend. She buys you a t-shirt like that. I was just trying to find the scope rings. Uh, for some reason I took the scope off my pellet gun. I think at some point I put the scope on my 22. Anyway, I couldn't find the rings. Ate lunch, changed clothes, screwed around with a bunch of stuff. Hopped on the four wheeler, came down here. I thought I had the 22 on my shoulder. Got the pellet gun with really, really bad iron sights. Uh, they're called iron sights even though they're junky plastic and I've never shot this with iron sights I always used a little scope on it. I'm already here. So maybe we should take a shot See if we can hear anything ring. I doubt it though And I also forgot to cut this little birch down which is exactly right in the middle of where you want to shoot <laughs> You think that'll be a problem? Uh, let's just see if we can hit anything steel down there with an unsighted in pellet gun and actually hear it. I also don't have a rest or a sandbag or anything. I'll have to make some sandbags at some point. Oh, what a lovely ladder somebody built. Yeah, that tree is exactly in the middle. All right, now I want you to listen really closely. Oh yeah, I forgot. I need to move that table out of the way too. Well, I can still see the movable targets. I'm not sure if they ring as loudly. Ding! <laughs> yeah, there's no chance. Well, let's try one more. Uh, this is not the easiest one to load laying down. Uh, I did make this just about the right size. So we got that going for us. Yeah, there's no chance. These sights are horrible. I'm not even sure. Well, I mean, clearly this will lob them that far. I don't know if you can shoot this thing accurately that far or not. Okay, back to camp. Gotta get the 22. Don't worry so much, I found it. Oh, this is gonna be good fun. I think I got it sighted in about 50 yards, and what are we, like 125? I bet we can hit something. Well, I guess we're going for the safety squints because I forgot my helmet too. Well, it's, it's one cut. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I love shooting this thing with subsonic ammo. You don't need hearing protection. It'd be, actually be really cool to have a suppressor on it too. Don't judge me. I think it'd be fun probably have to do it at some point. How about if I hit something, then I'll take a camera down and you can actually see where the bullet's going. It's kind of a long trek now, so 
we might as well wait and see. Hello? There it is. Finally, I can use the zoom on this thing. Out here in the woods, there's just no open spot long enough to need to zoom it in. Let's see if we can get a different sound. Let's see. Yeah, we can't see them all because I forgot to move the damn table. Well, go put a camera down there and I'll move the table. Right in the center. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, it's kind of too bad to move this. I got it all leveled out with my little cookies underneath there, but I guess maybe if I don't disturb them too much, I could put it back. All right, I'm gonna throw you down here. Let me see if we can hit all six of those, biggest to small. Okay, oh man, I can't see them all. My uh, coat hanger tree I left in the middle there. I might be able to sneak it by. All right, here's the big one. That's one. Ooh, gonna have to sneak it by that red stand too. That's two. I moved the table, but I left everything else in the way. And is that three? Four. Now, if you're a shooter at all, you would realize how insanely unimpressive this is to hit these steel targets at 125 yards with a rifle and a decent scope but you've never seen it done on my range. Over the top. There it is. <laughs> All right, now this one be at least a two out of 10 impressive because I can only see half of it behind that damn tree. Oh, and I'm out of ammo. <laughs> what do you think, should I just put one in? Well, let's do two, just, I mean, just in case the wind comes up or something. Well, what, but that was more than two. Aren't you gonna hit it in the first shot? I probably am, but you know, the, the weight of the rifle's off a little bit if it's not full. I just make up excuses left and right, don't I? We're gonna have to lean all the way off the edge here. Let's see if we can see that thing. This. It's a good thing I put more than two in there. My neck's already getting tired. <laughs> Come on, we gotta hit that one. Bang, we got it. <laughs> okay, so that's reasonably fun. I like it, I like the platform up here too. I don't know if this is quite, mm, yeah, it's wicked fun. They were all pretty easy except for that little guy. Couldn't figure out exactly where I was shooting. Oh, man, I tell you what, that was a lot of stinking work. I thought it would be maybe a three day project, a couple days to clear the trees and a day to build the platform. It took, I don't know, I don't know what days are out here. I don't even know what month it is, but it was at least a week and a half, maybe two weeks to get all this done. 
I'll show you on the way down there. So there's the range. The table got scooted off. This is that little island that we cut out here. And check this out. All of this along the trail here. Still along the trail. And that corridor right through there. Doesn't look like much when you drive it on the four-wheeler, but uh, it, it wore me out. I was just going to say, I think the shooting range is finally complete, but I do want to build some benches. There was a giant pine tree, white pine, that I cut down, like, I don't know, last fall or in the winter or something. I think I used the wood for framing the walls of the cabin. The only part of it I didn't use was the fattest part because it was way bigger than my chainsaw mill would go through. I think it's like 25 inches diameter or something like that. And it just laid aside because, I mean, what am I going to do with it? And then I got that new mill, which will... Uh, actually, that's how I chose the size of the bar and the mill I got because that was the biggest log I've cut out here in the last three years. Anyway, it's still laying out there. It's probably... I'm just guessing 15 feet long and I haven't really thought of anything good to do with it yet I don't want to just you know slab it up into thin stuff or make two by fours out of it but I was thinking maybe I cut a giant chunk out of it maybe like mill it in half and oh, oh my gosh wouldn't that make a cool table if you just had a two foot diameter log milled right down the middle and open it up I don't know anyway might do some benches down there and I do need, after having used this a little bit, I do need to make some, like, paper hangers of some sort. I want to put some paper targets on that hillside above the steel plates. Although, if I'm mostly shooting 22, it's not like you can see a hole in a piece of paper at 125 yards. I don't know. We'll figure out something. There's always something more you can do on a shooting range. Oh yeah, by the way, this gave me flashbacks of uh, building the sky deck. If you're kind of new to the channel... I, gosh, I hope nobody's actually watched all of my videos. That's a lot of your time down the tube. But I think those two Skydeck videos are some of the most interesting, terrifying, bizarre videos I've shot and put up on YouTube. I'll put links to those in the description. It's kind of like this, except maybe eight times the size, and it's 15 feet off the ground. And I built it only to see if I could do it, see if I could go up. 15 feet top trees and then somehow I milled all the lumber and then had to figure out how to haul I don't know what they were 14 15 16 foot 2 by 14s up in the air and get them all in place that was that was wild so if you like this kind of building definitely check those videos out forecast called for like 60 degrees today and for the next like five days and it actually ended up being 70 and I think tomorrow 72 and you know what that means it's time to get the planer out. Man, I have been waiting all winter long for it to warm up enough that I can get that damn 13-inch planer out and put a whole bunch of stuff through it. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is take all four boards of the picnic table and I'm going to run them all through there, make them gorgeous, and then I'm going to do all my name carving. Did I say carving? I think, I, I think I'll do carving instead. So, picnic table refinishing, planing of everything I own, everything I've made this winter. I could take it down out of the cabin and run it all through there. Oh, it's going to be a planer fest. Thanks for watching. Come back next week if you want. I'll, I think I'll still be here. You like my shirt? <laughs> it's a good one. Peace.